just ended up just getting worse and worse for a day or two until it ended up all over the flat at home. It, it was water from my house to right across the other side of the river to the substation on Blackman's Gap Road. And uh, the last afternoon before the before the rain stopped, it come a sort of a storm, and and I was sitting in the kitchen watching some cattle that was stuck on the flat, you know, couldn't get off, and then. When the storm stopped, I went outside and I was sitting on a stump out in the backyard watching them. And then, next thing they got moving like as though they were going to try and come out, and they just washed away. And uh, I, I think there'd be probably like 57 head of cattle and a mob of calves went. And uh, I think counting the carbs, we're still at least 35 head still missing. And when they washed away, I, I was just watching them go past and they went about that fast in the water. That's about how quick the river was moving. Were they belly up at that point? No, they just blew their bellies up and floated, you know. They, they were, you know, they didn't look to be real stressed or anything, but the cows were singing out to their calves and calves were singing out to their mothers and uh, well, I was three or something cows came out you know they got to the edge and swam out and got up the bank at the house and three cows I think it was and a little baby calf got out but when they were swimming out the little calf was washed up against the side of the cow that sort of what held the calf there you know and I think the, all the other little calves that got washed away, we never seen them again, like the baby calves and you know, they just get washed up against a tree and drowned or you know, once they got against the tree with the water pressing on them they'd never get out, would they? No, well I think a lot of the people have got a common interest, don't they? Yeah, I think that. They're all in the same line of you know, like well now the sawmill's closed and that it sort of took the timber fellas out of it a fair bit. But, uh, you know, there's still a lot of people about that have got cattle. The dairy and industry's wrecked. You know, it needs a big shake up that milk business and get it sorted out so those fellows are working for money, not for love. And that's what's happening. How do you think they're feeling like, you know, they experienced the dollar a litre, now the flood hits them, you know, the government doesn't want to know them, industry doesn't want to know them. No, they'd be feeling real, real down, those people. Like, I dairied myself for a long time, over 20 years, and there's a lot of work dairying, and, and like a lot of town people that buy their milk in a bottle, I think that's where it comes from, but, but it don't, you know, like, you know, I'd be down changing hydrants in the middle of the night or over at the yard pulling calves in the middle of the night. If you didn't get up, set the alarm and go and pull them, the cows would die. And, you know, the people that are drinking the milk, they don't know that. Yeah, they got no idea. Do you think they know about the floods or anything? The people who are drinking no, the milk in the cities? They'd have a they'd have a, a small idea about it. You know, like a flood like we've just had. You know, it takes months to get over it. Months and months, like you know, especially if you get a mob of cattle washed away, there'll be a month to your year that you won't have any income at all but you'll still have work to do and, and every time you buy something you still got to pay top dollar for it, you know.